<laughs> Absorbed in an amusing task, huh? <laughs> Gotta love pizza. Zhao Pu too. Matsu Yuppie, man. I'm waiting. I'm waiting. You gotta show me something, man. Everyone says you're awesome, alright? So I'm gonna put my faith in you, but you gotta show me something, alright? Yo, you guys, this is Blacklist of the Abyss, and you're watching my review for Hunter x Hunter, episode 109. And this episode is pretty much all build up. Yeah, first, you have Kalua talking with Gun and Ikalgo, going over all these what ifs. And then you got them contacting Colt. They figure out how Pito's power works, or at least they, they're able to assume how her power works. That when she's healing somebody, she can't use her net or control any of the soldiers. And once they get that information, they're able to deduce who exactly it was she was healing. Because if she she wouldn't risk the king's safety by letting her end down just to heal one of the royal guards. So it would have it had to be the king himself who was injured. And since no one can injure the king except for himself, it had to have been Mira who injured himself. It's like like uh you can't scratch diamond unless you have another another diamond or something like that. Right. You'll like or you know in anime you'll see something that's indestructible, so you just have it hit itself and then it gets destroyed. You know, something like that. So Miram no one can hinder Miram except for himself, therefore it had to have been him. Alright. So they're able to figure all that stuff out. They contact Moro, give him that information as well. And the selection starts. You know, and all these people come out, they start marching towards the palace. Um, we see the Royal Guard talking, and one of the things that comes up during that conversation is that, uh, they figure, well, Chao Poof, he, fig he figures out that one of the guys in Gon's group is able to teleport people pretty much. So he says, you know, in case they do have someone like that, we should have someone stick to the king at all times, just to make sure they don't pop up out of nowhere and try something, that way we can continue to protect him. And he figures that he's the one best suited for that since Montague is too big and Pito will get absorbed in amusing tasks. Yeah, so by the process of elimination, it has to be him. And um, yeah, that's when during well towards the tail, tail end of that conversation is when everyone's aura disappears. By everyone, I mean like Gom, Kalua, Morel, etc. Their aura disappears, and P and P two notices this obviously because she has her and active. And she assumes exactly what they want her to, to assume. That they used Zetsu, I believe it is Zetsu, the one that lets you hide your presence, and they mixed into the crowd. Right? And in reality, they're in uh, Noe's rooms. Right? So, um, everything so far is going according to plan, I guess. Um, Shoot's still worried about everything, you know, and, um, I get I guess it kinda goes back to what Kamu was saying before about how the unexpected can happen, so even if things are currently going according to plan, they're not as competent as they as you normally would be if everything was going according to plan. Right? So shoot in particular is worried because he he shoot that's just how he is. And Nov actually shows up and he kinda just takes care of some of those worries and says, you know, he'll go out and you know, keep an eye on the Royal Guard and everything. And um, at this point, we actually see Miram talking with Pito in his quarters, or like his th the throne room, I guess you could call it. I think that was, I think that's the throne room since he was sitting on the, the yeah. <laughs> um, he he pretty much tells Pito to protect Komugi, which Pito's like, you yeah, know, it's my job to protect you. Why am I protecting her? But when like she's like, all right, you know, you're the king. I'll I'll do what you want, you know. <laughs> so, yeah, she wasn't she wasn't exactly jumping up and down at the idea, but she's gonna do it anyway. And um, while Pito was busy talking with Miram, shower poof, he's flying in the air, sending all these 
particles and stuff down to them. And Nova's looking at it, and he's like, oh, those, those are scales. Right? So he's sending these scales into the crowd, and it they're, those scales are actually used to hypnotize them. That way they won't run away when all the heads start to roll. You know, which turns out to be a good thing for Moro and the boys, too. So, uh, they're perfectly fine with that. And, um, at this point, everyone's there except for Golden, Kalua, and Ikago, but they end up showing up as, well, no, too, because he was up on the surface. But, yeah, uh, he ends up coming in later on, anyway. So, pretty much everyone's there. Right? <laughs> everyone's there, alright? And, at this point... Everyone kind of just gets their own time to think. And I'm not going to talk about everyone, but I'll just bring up a few people, like Morel. Um, he said he's not at 100%. He said he's like at 35 or 40%. So, uh, and he said that because of that, he can accept his fate more easily, which means he he thinks he's... And he probably will, he probably will die. So, yeah, <laughs> bye, Morel. <laughs> uh, it was nice knowing you. You beat a couple Chimera ads. It was pretty legit. See ya. Uh, <laughs> didn't, you know, I don't exactly want Morel to die, but if he, but if he's telling me ahead of time that he's going to die, then I can't really do much about it. Um, Kalu was talking at one point, well, thinking at one point. We learned that he has this new technique. Um, I forgot what it was called. It was like, Con Mar or something like that, but he has this new lightning technique, so I'm looking forward to that. Uh, I don't know if I mentioned this before, but Kalu is my favorite character, so yeah, <laughs> in the series. So yeah, um, well, I'm looking forward to that. Maybe we'll get some more yo yo action. And um, shoot, shoots worrying over Kalu specifically, then he switches to worrying about himself. But you know, he's he sees that the mental weakness that Kalu had during their fight is gone. But at the same time, it feels like he's kind of just like fading away. So, I guess mentally, like it's like all the stress, all the stuff he's had to go through, pretty almost dying against the, um, how were they called? The ortho siblings? I don't even remember. It's been so long. Well, those, those the the billiard, not the billiard, the um, dart dart siblings. Yeah, there we go. I'll just call them that. <laughs> yeah, he almost died against them. You know, so I mean it's pretty stressful any plus the stress he had to go through before that with just you know trying to mess with the selection process you know so he's he's spent you know he's mentally exhausted so I mean it's it's natural that he's starting to fade away but yeah that's those are really the only ones I really feel like talking about the others are you know whatever I mean Calgo says he's gonna be reborn after tomorrow he's gonna be a new person I get I, cool, I guess, but all right, whatever. Um, I don't, personally, I don't care. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that's pretty much it. At the end of the episode, they all head out, and yeah, that's it. Um, like I said in the beginning, this episode was all build up, but even so, I did like it, I thought it was pretty good, so I'll give it an 8 out of 10, even though it was just a build up episode. But yeah, that's it. Uh, <laughs> rate, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time. I'm